Hello everyone, Time to Grind here, and today I wanted to talk about Ring of Pain. And Ring of Pain is an extremely stylized roguelite deck builder, similar to Slay the Spire, with a very interesting gameplay mechanic of having all the cards in the deck in a circle. And before we get into the review, I do just want to let you guys know that I was given a review copy of the game in order to make a video for you guys. I never let that influence my reviews, I just like staying as transparent as possible. Also, for this video, I'm going to be in the top right corner of the screen just because there's a lot of UI stuff in the bottom left, uh, so just in case you were wondering. So in Ring of Pain, you are placed in front of a circle of cards that contain enemies, treasures, potions, weapons, armor, spells, and more. And your goal is to get to the exit. The enemies that will sometimes block your path you have two options for. Firstly, you can fight them and trade blows until you or them, hopefully them, uh, dies, or you can just try to skip past them. And if you try to skip past them you use your stealth percentage and if you fail they get to hurt you when you pass them. Some creatures also do special things when they die like explode and some creatures have special effects like they'll follow you or block your path. You can also find a ton of different items in the game to equip to increase your stats like damage, armor, health, crit chance, speed, and more along with having cool unique effects on a lot of them. And there are over 10 different types of item categories, so you have your armor, you have your weapons, boots, gloves, abilities, and more, and each item is in one of those categories, and you can only have one of each type. And by having a ton of different types, it makes it feel a lot more satisfying than if everything was just a general passive, because you sometimes have to make trade-offs and it just feels awesome to feel like you're getting your character all geared up. And so you flip through the cards left or right, killing enemies and gaining items and potions and stat increases, and then you find the exit. And when you get to the exit, you go to the next level in what makes up this ring of levels. Sometimes you'll have random events like fountains or shops or super powerful enemies, or sometimes you'll meet this creepy bird that is supposedly guiding you, or you can meet this weird darkness thing that's somehow helping you as well, and you'll kind of get little bits and pieces of the story, if you want to call it that. And you keep doing this and getting further and further, and if you win, there's a couple more difficulty levels to attempt to beat. There's also a daily challenge mode that has different random modifiers that has leaderboards, and in terms of progression, you can unlock new items to find in future runs. There are a ton of achievements, just like in Binding of Isaac, and a lot of them will actually unlock new items, so you can try to unlock them all and get all of the items while you're trying to beat the game. And so the gameplay in itself is very fun. The runs don't last too long, and it makes you want to keep playing the game over and over again. Also, the game is very brutal. There's some runs I just die in the first like minute because of some mistake I make that tragically kills me. And it definitely matches the overall creepy themes and vibes the game gives off. All the card art is very stylized in this scratchy type of way, but it's not overly dark which is nice. And it has a very horror-like soundtrack that has all of those stereotypical horror stings if you know what I'm talking about. And so the game is definitely fun, and I really enjoyed the unique mechanic of having the entire deck in a ring. It seemed like a gimmick at first, but once I started playing and noticing how the cards even interacted with themselves, you know, depending on their placement, even if I wasn't in front of them, it really impressed me because it just, it gives the game a lot more strategic depth. I don't think the game is going to be like the next Binding of Isaac with thousands of hours of replayability in it, but I don't think it needs to be. It is a very satisfying roguelite deck builder that brings a lot of new things to the table in between the gameplay and the presentation, and I'm very interested to see if the game does well, what kind of content and updates we can see it getting in the future. So if you are a fan of deck building roguelites like Slay the Spire or Monster Train, I would highly, highly recommend this game. Also, I'm trying something new, so along with this review I made, there is a let's play of the game with my first impressions of the first half an hour in kind of a let's play format. So if you want to see that and some more gameplay just of Ring of Pain, uh, then check that out in the description, uh, and it'll be on screen at some point here. Uh, but if you have played Ring of Pain or just from watching gameplay, I would love to know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to see more content. I make two to three video reviews a week on a wide variety of games, and roguelites and roguelikes are starting to become what I'm almost known for. So if you enjoy those types of games, subscribe and ring that bell like all the big boy YouTubers say to hear all kinds of info about future roguelites. 
And if you're going to be grinding out some games of Ring of Pain, I wish you luck and see you guys next time. Or in my Let's Play video of Ring of Pain. See ya.